All right, here we have Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, which is an open world action game with some survival elements like cooking, crafting, hunting, and gathering. So you better be prepared to get your pluck on. I'm gonna take you through some of the most important things that you need to know, like how to effectively hunt, find higher grade materials, build better gear, make the most out of dinner, and of course, it wouldn't be one of my videos without some combat tips. These should help you have a better time out there as you Dwayne the Blue Johnson your way through the jungles of Pandora. Now let's kick this off. I'm Alex, and consider sticking around if you happen to be new to my channel. First up, the resources you gain from gathering and hunting come in different rarity values, which directly affects cooking and decides the overall health bonus for armor and overall damage value of weapons. So to craft essentially higher level versions of gear, you'll need to know how to perform a clean and merciful kill when you're hunting, because that increases the chances of looting higher grade materials. Getting a clean kill means you only inflicted damage directly to the creature's weak spot, which you can highlight with the Navi sense. Hey, listen. These scarab crawlers have protective shells on their backs, for example, but their weak spot is directly underneath them. If you just use a little bit of patience and wait for their intimidation warning, that's an easy opening to pop them cleanly. Getting a merciful kill on a creature means you took them down in either a short amount of time or in a low amount of shots. If you treat them like a walking pincushion damage sponge, or let them limp off and slowly die on their own, that will negate the merciful kill bonus. Also, don't bother using bullets for hunting, because that will completely ruin your chance to loot them. Next, there's a few ways you can take down these exoskeleton mech suit dudes, but my personal favorite is with the eject skill that you can unlock pretty early on. Then after one simple toss of your shot grenade, that will set them up for a insta-kill by meleeing in close proximity. Yoink! This'll rip them right out of that comfy seat, completely neutralizing them. If you load up a weapon with some special ammo, like the shotgun storm shells, that can stun them as well and set them up for a quick takedown. Also, the red electrical boxes can be shot to shock anything around them. Yes, setting up for a forceful eject. But wait, some later game enemies can come equipped with protective shields that cover their cockpit. Damn you, science! A small but appreciated detail, falling through big fat leaves will slow your downward velocity like it would in real life. Maybe, I don't know, I think I saw that in a Jackie Chan movie or something. That does let you drop from high elevations without any fall damage though. There's also fruit that grows up along some of the taller trees, and just passing through them will automatically collect them as you flop through the branches. This one is easy to miss, but there's an RPG you can find in this game, not the Final Fantasy Baldur's Gate type, the rocket explodey type. You can only temporarily use these things, but you can find it in enemy outposts in these yellowish containers. Once you have the rocket launcher, I don't need to explain exactly what you do with it. Oh, and I did try rocket jumping, so you don't have to. It's a nope. Another thing that's easy to underutilize is the built-in evasion mechanic. You can strafe dodge to the sides by pressing jump during a left, right, or backwards input. Holding sprint beforehand will let you dodge an even greater distance. You can also hold the jump input before releasing to dodge an even greater, greater distance. You can still fire and reload during this maneuver, so it's a great mobility option during a firefight, since it hinders the enemy's tracking of you. I'm playing through on the highest difficulty, so this is pretty useful, and these strafe dodges kind of make the gameplay feel more like a mech shooter. Titanfall 6, the Navi conflict. No, wait, better. Mech Warrior 9, Rise of the Blue People. I'll collect those royalty checks. Just like hunting, plant materials also come in different rarities depending on how carefully you obtain them. Jiggle too much in the wrong direction when you're plucking them and you'll ruin the pristine bonus. One individual plant type will always extract in the exact same direction though. So the game forcibly makes you become one with fantasy nature, as you slowly start to memorize all these weird bushes. 
Each of these can also yield better qualities if wet or dry or day or night. Like these things, I can't even get them to bloom during the day, and I tried every normal method that came to mind. Now, if you come across something that you can't gather because it's polluted, look to the skies nearby for billowing smoke. Take down these toxic enemy encampments, and you'll purify that polluted section of the map. Most all of the mechanical enemies or turrets can be exploited with your hacking tool. You can choose to install the hack immediately to disable it, or you can choose to store up a sequence of hacks. Then you can trigger multiple hacks all at once when it suits you best. Why am I not moving? Hey, that was an expounded upon tip you knew about from before. Unless you're hunting them for their bits, keep an eye out for injured animals. You can sometimes come across ones that have been marked by one of these darts. If you approach them slowly and get close enough, you can pull it out and net some extra spare parts. In any of the major settlements, you can find a changing place, which lets you recustomize your... avatar? Unless you're playing in co-op, a lot of this isn't going to matter so much since, you know, first person perspective. But you do tend to see your body and hands a lot though, so I found changing your skin pattern and body paint to shake up what you're actually seeing during gameplay the most. The cooking system functions off a primary ingredient base and a secondary ingredient modifier. The primary ingredient dictates the type of buff effect that'll be applied, like here I'm going with Fury level 2. The secondary ingredient dictates the duration of that buff effect. Higher rarity, the longer the food buff lasts. This made a meat and fish skewer that gives 45% bonus damage for 31 minutes. Then I got two more of the food buff extension skills, which put the dish at 45% extra damage for 37 minutes. And this last one is just more of a detail I found interesting. Creatures actually come in different ages. Usually, the older the animal, the slightly higher their stats. So pretty much, older creatures are higher level creatures. Respect your elders, they got better DPS. That's it for now, but I'm curious, are you the stealthy bow and arrow tactical hacker type, or the full on assault run and gun straight into the base type? Let me know down in the comments or over on Twitter at BoomstickAlex. Now, that was Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. I was Alex, and thanks for watching my video today.